no, it doesn't. If tools, for example, do not, and so it's good to it's good to again define the terms. And and I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's one way to look at what are the values or what are the choices in terms of of what we use. And I think that if you look at modern technology inherent in the technology, forget about how it's used. Actually, it it embodies things like dependence on experts, uh, standardization, uh, I would say also coldness, distancing, whereas tools, especially tools that don't involve much of any division of labor, embody choices or values like flexibility, intimacy, equality, or at least the potentials for these things. And we know, in fact, there was the equality, so it's not just a potential, but but anyway, uh, in the future, it's a potential. You know, in other words, you can look at the technology and read the dominant values of society. It isn't just how they're being used. That's one of the main myths that keeps the system going. Oh, that's we don't need to talk about that. It's just whether the right people use it in the right way and blah, blah, but that's not true. That's simply not true. That's, that's a basic uh, prop of the system, and it, it's always it's always meant when, when the, the proposition that it's neutral really means it's positive. That's what it really means. And it's meant to keep it off the table. But what if we should look at what is the nature of it? As, as actually Marx started talking about exploring, and then he gave that up because that's a little too, well, I don't know why he gave it up, but then he, he moved on to the question of which social class controls the technology, controls the means of production. You know, which is a totally different question. If if you don't find that there's anything wrong with with the advance of uh, of technology, then you don't you don't have the problem. You know, so I mean, I, I agree with much of with some of what you said, but you know, the reason why we we're in this crisis is I think part of it is that we haven't looked at the nature of these things. They just keep on going, and we don't even know why things are getting worse by the minute. And that's why it isn't just and you, and you bring up. The dis it's, it's better to focus on the distribution of these things. But you know, that gets back to a radical problem we all have, I think. Well, then you've got the state, don't you? I mean, who does the distribution? I mean, that's, you've got that problem. Whereas you don't have that problem if you have, you know, to talk about the, you know, kind of, to some of us, maybe ideal state, where there's no, you're not, you're not servicing society, in some kind of mass society. There's, there's autonomy, and, and it's, it's, not, it's not a question of distributing the surplus or the storage. <coughs> People didn't even want that for, for you know, a million years or something. You know? I mean, I'm not saying it's, it should be exactly like that, but at least that's one way to solve the problem. Because, you know, people, and I, I won't go too much longer on this, but, and I'm not trying to say that you, you uh, subscribe to everything I'm criticizing here, but... You know, when people say, for example, anarchists who say, the, the thing is, the classical anarchist thing is quite good enough, thank you. We want to get rid of the state, we want to get rid of capitalism. And all this primitive stuff, or whatever you call it, is not only loony, but it's irrelevant. Okay, let's look at that. Well, first of all, how do you get rid of the state if you have a complex society? It wouldn't, if you want to save everything, but have it a liberatory uh, the libertarian anarchist society, well, you can't get rid of the state. This, this whole stuff would stop in a day or two if there weren't many, many layers of government. It's, you know, it's just that that's the reality. And, it's, and I think it's actually the same with capitalism. If, you want, if, if we want the whole techno culture and everything else, well, where, how do you possibly run it? outside of capitalism. And believe me, I'm not arguing for capitalism, I'm just saying, you know, it evolves, all these things evolve together. That's what money is for, you know, to run, to run capitalism. If you don't have money, how are you going to keep a, a fantastically complicated society running? I mean, the, and the only example, and I'll stop here, but one example is Michael Albert's Paracon uh, idea, participatory economics. Everybody goes to meetings and decides on consumption and production, although I think those are alienated categories right there that should be gotten rid of, but 
well, okay, so everybody's going to millions and millions of meetings, and just imagine the fantastic <laughs> amount of bureaucracy that would involve. Why not call that a government? Because, you know, just imagine what, what kind of communism is that? Well, yeah, you know, I, I grant you, we, we've got problems we can't answer, but if you look at the other side of it, that's no... Anyway, I'll, I don't want to hide the whole thing. Yeah, right. uh, gentlemen, yeah. yeah. Um, this is more of a comment, but I think it needs to be said. Uh, the words that you're using are extremely aggravating, like primitivist and hunter-gatherer. These are centralizing terms that do not in any way convey the, the volume of gravity of what you're speaking to. And by bringing them down to what, what you're saying is, is just very essentializing and condescending. And coming from a perspective of Western capitalist, like colonialist, imperial a mentality that is actually not helping what you're, you're talking about. You're trying to no, 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 no. But yeah, but that's what people talk about. You address it in, in anthropology. You say, okay, we're going to be racist. Now let's talk about racism. I don't think that's acceptable for you to use racist terms. So that's just and colonial terms, and things that have so much baggage to them, without addressing that. Well, I, you know, I, I think uh, one thing we're talking about is the er the attempt to erase indigenous cultures. That's what modernity does. That's what industrialism does. It standardizes, it homogenizes, and more importantly, tries to get rid of indigenous cultures. And it's been fairly successful. Now, that's it's racist to deny that. That's where we're coming from. So. Don't give me this postmodern shit about that's essential. <laughs> that's not <laughs> Yeah, so Well, let me just say, I think, I think it's, you know, part of, the, part of the effort to cut through some of this or to get somewhere is to be practical. I mean, a federation is just a word. What does that mean in terms of daily life? It doesn't mean anything to me. That's just another political term that sounds good, but, you know, what is, what is the point of that? I, you know, we, we've got to do better than that or else we're just... Uh, throwing around terms that sound nice or something, but don't, they don't really address the idea of stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to address the question of technological neutrality and some aspects of technology. I'll give a one very good concrete example of what I would consider a, a technological trajectory of development of the technique. The automobile. Um, inconceivable to have the automobile without all the things that are necessary <coughs> to it. Roads that are covered with what? They're covered with asphalt, which is made from what? Oil. How do you fuel the production of cars? Oil or nuclear or some very high energy needs that are highly industrial. Machine parts, steel. Steel comes from where? You don't, you don't even grow it in a field. You know. um, that's just one example. <coughs> me. Another aspect too is centralization in a lot of these high technologies and these advanced industrial technologies where uh, a lot of these kinds of productive methods I think would be inconceivable in a decentralized, federated, you know, whatever model you want to use, worker councils or uh, this kind of me uh, method of doing. And, it, and also it requires so much expertise that your wonderful worker councils would be just, you know, what, delegating it to experts? And you know what happens when they delegate to experts. The experts say, well, who the hell are you? We're running the show. You know, oh yeah, we're accountable to your wonderful, you know, worker assembly, but we run the show. We'll tell you what are the issues at hand, how many cars should be produced, 
How much of it has to be excited? Same old, same old. Nothing's changed that. So worker control of the disaster 